All right. All right, crew, hold on a minute. Okay, we're going to, everybody's got page 174 out there. should look like this. Uh, I want to talk, I want to talk about voltage drops today, and then we're going to get into battery, the battery chapter. Um, this is something that we've had a couple of issues with, with the top, the today's class. I was playing around with some of the, the little, act, the, I don't even know what you call them, the little simulators, online simulators where you click and drag the, the leads for the voltmeter in different places, all right? Uh, I want to I wanna talk about, I want to do this page today because I'll explain it in a way I hope that the, the online didn't be, wasn't able to do. Some of those weren't actually working for whatever reason, the software wasn't working. So we're going to go through these, and I just want to, I just kind of want to walk you through a lot of them. Uh, so what we have here is, are some pretty basic circuits, right? Series circuit. What's this one? Parallel, parallel circuit. Okay. Series circuit, parallel circuit. Um, if you understand where voltage is supposed to be, not current and not resistance, but voltage, if you get a good understanding of voltage and where voltage should be, uh, then you're going to, electricity is going to make a lot more sense to you. So don't worry about, you know, you don't have to worry about doing the math at Ohm's Law in your head right now. Um, you, if you just kind of get a general idea of where we should see voltage, where we shouldn't see voltage, that's all I want to know. Uh, you're going to use a, a voltmeter, a DVOM, a whole bunch of times this year. So... Getting it set on the right setting is the first thing that we need to do, and then being able to find where where things are supposed to be is the second. So we'll take a take a break. Good morning, CPC staff and students. Please rise and remove all headgear and prepare for a Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'm going to... I'm going to do this this way. We'll draw, it. we'll draw it right on the board here. Okay. So you've got a volt, you've got a voltmeter. It's set to read volts. Okay? Set for volts. Right here is the dial. Okay? And the voltmeter looks kind of like that. It actually doesn't give you a V there until you set it on the right thing. So you've got a reading for, what's that? Ohms, amps, you might see, what's that, Mil milliamps, yeah, current, amps, milliamps, smaller amount of current, right, okay, and then you have some that looks like that with dots and a straight line, and then you have one that says that with dots and a squiggly line. Both of these are volts, which one do we care about in the automotive world? Straight line. Why? What's straight line mean? Direct current. Okay. So we're going to set it right there. That's volts, volts, D, C. Direct current. So that's how your, set, your setup is going to be. On the bottom here, you have a whole bunch of little holes to plug in your, your leads, okay? These two right here is where we're going to set up for voltage and, and ohms if we're going to measure resistance. But we want voltage for this one. Actually, I should make this one black. Which means our leads are going to go like this. 
and like that. Okay, and it's going to read something right there. We have the digital volt ohm meters are auto, what we call auto ranging meters, which means you set it to voltage, it'll automatically dial in a range for the voltage, which means the decimal place is going to move around. So 20 volts, 10 volts, a tenth of a volt, two tenths of a volt, whatever it shows, the decimal point is going to be kind of important to know okay, where we're at. So if it's auto ranging, I set it on DC, that means it's going to read everything on the car. We've got to watch out for where that decimal point goes because that's going to make a difference in this. So here's my, my screen. Can everybody see that right that? That's a big enough area, I hope. Uh, if I hook this up, I'm going to hook this up. That's a battery, right? What? This is going to be the negative side. That's going to be the positive side. I know that because that's ground, right? Without knowing anything else, that's, that's ground, okay? Which normally when we check voltage for a battery, we're going to check what we call open source voltage first, which means I'm going to take this lead and put it where? This one goes here. This one goes there. Okay? Set up like that, how much should a fully charged battery rig? 12.6. 12.6. Okay? See the decimal? 12.6. Right. Now, when you measure, when you're testing for voltage and when we're checking for voltage drop, I'm going to leave that right there. Okay, I'm going to leave the negative lead there because everything is going to end up going back to ground, back to ground, back to ground. Does that make sense? Right? So if I'm going to test all of these spots for voltage, I have to check the difference in it's what a voltmeter is measuring is the difference in voltage from one, from one spot to another spot. Not the total voltage everywhere, but the difference in voltage. So the difference in voltage from ground to the positive side of our battery is 12.6 in a fully charged battery. Okay, so if I check for voltage right there, which is the same spot that I just did, you get 12.6. You should have 12.6. Okay? So I go through this wire here. I go through that fuse. I go through that wire there. I come to this load right here, which looks like a speaker. Right? What should my voltage be right there? 12.6. Is it going to be exactly 12.6? No. Would it be realistic for me to say that this is going to be, you know, if I, if I got a reading this to 12.58? Okay. That's 12.6. That's 12.58. Why is there a voltage drop right there? That's a drop. It started here. And it drops to that. Right. The wire that it's traveling through has some resistance to it. It's not a perfect conductor. Okay? So the, the, the more wire, the more things that we have to travel through, you're going to get a slight amount of drop, and that's okay. But is this still reasonably good? Okay? Yes, it is. All right? So now I go through the load, and I come to the switch, but the switch is open. All right. What is my voltage going to be there? This is this is tricky. What did you say? 12.6. Why? I'll leave that six. Just because what? Okay, because it hasn't gone anywhere yet. Remember, voltage is not the movement of electricity. It's just the the available amount of electricity. It's the available amount of pressure. Okay, it's going to be the same no matter where you go. As long as it's connected to the positive terminal, your voltage will always read the exact same thing until you close the circuit, right? So let's finish this one. What's voltage right there in this open circuit? Zero. 
or something relatively, really, really close to zero, right? Okay, because this is the same thing. Remember, this spot right here and that spot right there are connected, either through chassis ground, engine ground, or whatever. And then they come back to the battery. So really, what you're measuring here, if I were to move, take this lead and take it all the way over to here, I'm, am I not measuring the exact same thing as if I were to take that one and move it to right there? It is basically the same thing, and that's what I want you to understand. This, this is all connected. Even though it goes through a load, that load is not act on. It's not active. It's not sucking up any of those electrons at this point. It's not doing any work, which means it's all just kind of potential voltage right there. Right? So you, it doesn't matter if I measure it here and here or here and here. If I'm measuring two, the difference in, in voltage, the difference is going to be 12.6 because this one should be zero. Just follow that? Okay. So let's go. Let's do this one. What's the only thing that's changed here? Close the circuit. So what should my voltage be right there? 12.6. And there? And there? Zero. Because all of my voltage now dropped through the load. Did I just confuse you? Or do we got it? Okay. All of my voltage dropped through the load. Yeah, Reese. Because this is still an open circuit, and that load isn't actually a load at this point because it's not doing anything. It only becomes a load when it's doing work. So like if it was a light bulb, if the light bulb's not on, it's not doing anything. But since there's continuity, there's a coil of wire in there, there's... There's, there's continuity for the electrons to be able to go through. The voltage can still be read, even though the voltage isn't doing anything. This, this, this is the concept that I want you to understand about how voltage drops work. Right, so here's, and then this one, if that's zero, since this is one solid connection with no loads in between it, what should this one be? Zero. So let's say for a minute that our load here, this is a horn, right? It's supposed to be five lines loud. And instead, it's only two lines loud. What changed? The amount of voltage that went through this changed, okay? So if I dropped, if I'm supposed to drop 12.6 across those two, and then I go and I measure here, and I get 2 volts. This is hypothetical. If I measure 2 volts right there, what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? <coughs> There's what? There's a, what kind of voltage drop? If this still reads 12.6, and right here, all of a sudden, with the switch closed, I'm reading 2 volts, Where did the other where did the other ten where did the other two volts go? Remember, twelve volts, if I start at twelve point six, I have to end at zero. I have to. It's a law. Remember? Remember our army men? They they have to use up all of their energy before they get back to base. Otherwise, I don't know what happens. They got to do push-ups before they walk through the door or something, right? That's what ha that's what has to happen. So if they only used 10.6 to get through that battle right there, what does that mean is happening out here? You need two. We have a, another two volt voltage drop somewhere in the system, and it could be a corroded ground right there, or there, or anywhere in there, right? really, because it still has to get back to there. Does that, does that make sense? 
Okay, let's do a couple more. Okay, parallel circuit. I need a couple. Hmm? I like that. Um, keep, let's keep it simple. How many volts here? 12.6, fully charged battery. 12.6. How many here? Okay. Zero. 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 Easy, right? It's going to get a little tricky here. How many here? And here. Here. How much? 12.6? What? Yeah. <laughs> how many people agree that it's 12.6? Show of hands. Woo. You're right. 12.6. Why is it 12.6? Because it hasn't done anything yet. Because it hasn't done anything yet. Remember on this one and this example up here, this changed before the switch. Where is it? Don't forget about these numbers at the moment. That was, that was 12, 6, and then 0 because the switch changed. This is a, what we call a ground-sided switch. The switch is on the ground side. Okay? Here... It changed right there, close enough. Here it changed after the switch because it's a power-sided switch, which means power, the voltage, has not yet gotten to our load. Okay? 12.6, how much here? This one right here. 12.6. And then zero. Because that's the load. You get that? See, you can look look at a parallel circuit when you're when it comes to voltage drops. Look at a parallel circuit just like it's a it's a bunch of series circuits together. Okay. At this point, I can take that away, and I have, with the exception of that, I moved the switch from a ground side to a positive side switch. I have the exact same circuit that I had up there, right? Exactly the same thing. Voltage should drop through the load, through the light. This is the scenario that you typically get um, when you have a, remember I said how one, one headlight is dimmer than the other headlight? Okay. 12, 6, 2. And then if I check here, 12, 6, and let's call that one 0. This is the exact same thing, same load, same light, same everything, except one of them on the ground side I have 0, one of them on the ground side I have 2 volts. We'll call this, we'll call that left and that right. Which one has a bad ground? The one on your right, yes. this one right here. Yeah, I should have done that backwards. My, this one over here, yes. Exactly. Because the, now there's corrosion. We'll say there's a, there's a dirty ground right there, and that ground is now a load. The voltage has to have, go there somewhere. So if it's two volts here, I've got corrosion right there. What if I go back here? What should my voltage be right there? Zero. And what if I check it right there? Now remember, this grounds, this grounds to the body somewhere. It's a headlight, right? So it's going to ground to the body by the radiator somewhere. And then it's going to go through the body back to this terminal, which is now going back to the battery. So that's that short little, your, your negative battery terminal is only about this long. So if I go and I measure right there, and that's the bad ground, this ground's okay, what's it going to be right there? 
Zero. Get it? Because it dropped through that ground to get back here. Yay? Yay, nay? Yay. Okay. Here's a couple more series, a couple more series circuits. It looks like the same circuit where the switches are open and closed. So, 12.6, right? How about right here? 12.6, because the switch is open. How about right there? Okay. 12.6. Zero, because we've dropped through the load, and zero. Got that? I'm going I'm to do one more, but I'm going to draw it on the board because I didn't put it on my little worksheet here. Battery. Let's do, well, we'll put a fuse in there, and we'll put a power-sided switch just for the fun of it. And then we'll do light bulb. And then we'll do, I'm going to do another switch. Oh, let's do this. This will be fun. Another switch, then another light bulb, then a ground. There's only one switch. I, got, I took rid of that switch. That's not a switch anymore. We could make it a switch. You want to have a redundant switch? There's two switches. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have a path back to the battery. Okay. Complete circuit. It's not a complete circuit yet because it's not on. How much there? 12.6. How much here? Zero. No matter what happens from here on out, that's going to be zero, right? Okay. How much there? 12.6. And how much right there? Zero. Good. Zero. Yes. And it's going to be zero all the rest of the way down, right? Okay. Yeah. What if I close that switch? Is this still 12.6? Yeah. And this is now... And with that... <laughs> well, wait a minute. I tricked myself. Is that still 12.6? Yeah. Well, it could be 12. Zero. So is this still 12.6? Yes. Yes. It is. All right? How about all right there? Still 12.6 because this switch is still open. Right? Oh, this is fun. Now what is it? Now what's that one? We'll call it 6. We'll call it 6.3 just to make this make this balanced, right? 6.3. What is it right there? Also 6.3. And there? Zero. I feel like you got it. No. Which, you have 6.3 volts dropping through that light. Hey, guys, listen up. He, he just asked, is this why one headlight would be dimmer than another one? In this, in this scenario right here, would one headlight be dimmer than another one? No, because they're both dropping 6.3 volts through that one and through that one. Now, they're going to be dimmer. If I did this and put another circuit off this way and put one light here, now that's going to be... 12.6, that's going to be 
that headlight's going to be brighter than those two. Right? Okay, here's one thing that I want you to, to know, and it, I, don't, I don't want this to confuse you, but it's going to because this is what happens in a, in a pinpoint test. When you do a pinpoint test online, every once in a while, Mr. Montel and I will ask you to go get the pinpoint test for a trouble code or, or DTC or something like that, okay? Diagnostic trouble code. We, went with scan. we haven't gotten into scan tool diagnostics yet, but when you go in and scan a vehicle, if there's a fault with something, it'll give you a little trouble code, and it'll say there's a problem with the circuit for the headlights for whatever, okay? It does that. It says that. Um, a pinpoint test is going to have you check for voltage, but what it has you do when you check for voltage is, does anybody know the first thing that you have to do to, to typically to check for voltage? Well, you check the, yeah, yeah I'm, maybe I'm jumping ahead. Not the absolute first thing. Make sure you have battery voltage. Do, the lights don't look like that. They look kind of like this, and then they have a little connection, and then they have the light bulb, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing, same thing with this one. I'm going to have a little, a little connector, it looks like that, and then I have the light bulb. How do people typically check for voltage on a circuit, they unplug. Oh, stop right there. Don't over. Don't over. Don't get ahead of me. They unplug the light. So that light's not working. We unplug the light. Let's say. In, let's say. Uh, let, me go, let me go back. Scenario: In a series circuit, one light is dimmer. The lights. The lights are too dim. Okay, dimmer than they should be. What do you? What do you automatically think now that you know about voltage drop? There's not enough voltage going through, so there's corrosion or there's resistance somewhere in the, in the, in the system, right? So the pinpoint test is going to have you check the, the circuit. So I unplug this one. Check the positive side. What do you have? 12.6. Because it's an open circuit now. Even with the switch closed, it's an open circuit. Yes? Yes. I got 12.6 there. Okay, that one must be good. Put the light back in, disconnect that light. Check the power side of that one. What should it be? It should be 6.3. But, no, 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 I disconnected the light. It's an open circuit. What should it be? It, this is an open circuit at this point. 12.6. Just imagine that's like a switch, right? There should be 12.6 right there. Did I accurately check that circuit right there? No, because why? Because no matter how many loads I put in here, if I have corrosion right there, what's that going to read? 12.6. But when I plug in the light bulb, now how many volts, I'm, if I, how much voltage should be there? Should have, I should have 12, 6 here. I should have, without that corrosion in there, I should have 6, 3. But with this corrosion in there, what do I have? We'll, we'll call that, that's 12, 6. That now is all of a sudden. I'm going I'm to call it nine, right? Just because I don't know how much resistance that is. Now, and then how much is here is zero, which means am I splitting? Now all of a sudden I have another load in place that's taking away from both of those headlights at the same time. Do you see the difference there? So when I go to check a circuit, whenever you go to check a circuit, if you just check for voltage, all you're getting is voltage. I could replace this battery right here, this automotive battery, with a whole bunch of double A's. Double A's, double A's, double A's, double A's. Double A's about two, two volts each, so if I put six of those in, 
Double A, one, two, three, four, five, six. I need one more. If I take six double A batteries, stack them on top of each other, and hook my battery cables up to it, and then go check for voltage, just voltage, I'll have I could get these numbers. Is that gonna do you any good? No, because you need the amperage to move it. That's why you need we cold crank amperage and stuff that we talk about when we talk about batteries. So don't confuse voltage with ability to do work, okay? And don't confuse the presence of voltage at one spot for the absence of a problem somewhere else. Everyone get that? That makes sense? The, the, I, I was playing around with the, the online, what you were doing on yesterday, what most of you were do, playing around with it, and it doesn't work. I mean, the software just does not work. So, Right. If you, if you move those leads into the proper location, a lot of the times it doesn't recognize it. It's not, I mean, I guarantee that it's right, I, but it's not, okay? This is, this is electricity. If you can understand, we did all that with the wiring diagram, okay? If you can understand where the voltage is supposed to be and where the current is supposed to be, you'll be able to solve all sorts of electrical problems, okay? But you have to look at the whole system. You have to look at the whole thing. I always call this like a, it's like a, like a road map, okay? If, you, you're, if you're starting here and you need to end up over here, you could go this way, you could go this way. If it's a parallel circuit, you could branch off and go that way and run this motor over here or do whatever else you're going to do. Electricity and electrons are the same way. If they'll, there's a path to get somewhere, it's just like a bunch of roads, you can always get to the same spot. You can take different roads to get there, but you have to look at the big picture before you start out on your, on your journey. Electricity will take the shortest route possible. So what happens if I, I want to add fog lights or one of those light bars that everybody seems to love so much. I want to, I want to add some light bars. So I, I, take, I take and I splice into this wire right here because it's, a, it's, a, it's a, from a, a light somewhere. And then I run this big old light bar to ground. You got it tied into power. You got it grounded. If I shut the switch, lights come on, right? Yeah, lights come on. This will come on. There's 12-6 there's here, 12-6 here. We'll forget about that for the moment. Let's call this a good, a good circuit. So that's 12-6. That's zero. These lights are working the way they're supposed to be. Is that light going to work the way it's supposed to be? We don't really have enough information to say. As it's, as it's built right there, it'll, it'll work. It's just, it's a light. Lights don't carry a whole lot of current. I'm going to have zero volts there. Assuming you, you, you spliced it in really nice, everything's good, okay? But what, what often do people not do when they splice wires together? They don't solder it, shrink wrap it. They don't splice it in properly. So what happens when you just kind of shave off the insulation and then wrap a wire around and kind of tape it together? Well, that's a little excessive. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know what I'm about to tell you. Okay. Here. So here's here's what's going to happen in that situation over time. Next year, a year later, you go up to Silver Lake. You go through all the mud puddles. All this is going to get this is going to get wet, right? And when it gets wet, what happens to it? You get you get corrosion. I'm not worried about a fire at this point, but you get corrosion right there. Now how much voltage do you have there? Zero. Not zero, but less than, now my 12.6 is here. And down, and here, and here, it's all of a sudden, I don't know, 10. So now this is 10. <coughs> right? And now this is 5. And this is 10. Your lights aren't working as much as they should. So I'll, I'll do you one better. How many, of you, how many people have tied into a circuit 
or do you, do you suppose have tied into a circuit without knowing what they're doing? And instead of tying in right there, they just said, oh, there's a power wire right there. I'll just tie into that one right there. Now how much voltage is here? Well, let's start from the beginning. That's going to be how much? 12.6. 6, 6.3. These two are going to be about the same. And then this one's going to all of a sudden be 6.3. It's not 12 volts anymore. So your, your, your big light bar that's supposed to be really cool and blind everybody at the campfire when you show up to the party is now just a little accessory light and it doesn't look that cool. Just because you tied it into the wrong spot. But when I tested the circuit, there was 12 volts there. Should be good, right? When I unplugged that light and I said, oh, there's 12 volts there. That should be 12 volts. When I hook up my accessory light, it should be 12 volts, right? But it's not because you can't test it. I mean, a circuit isn't a complete circuit until it's a, actually a complete circuit. And with the switch open, wherever that switch may be, it's not a complete circuit. Okay? So and I, don't, I don't have any problem with anybody putting things into their cars, right? Adding accessories to the cars and things like that. I think it's, it's, there's nothing. It's fun. It's part of what makes this job fun. Okay? But if you do it wrong, okay, it's going to be wrong. And people who know are going to know. So I want you to do this stuff, but do it right. Without looking at the wiring diagram as a whole, I wouldn't know where I can mount my light bar. It's the difference between showing up at the party and blinding everybody and being really cool and showing up at the party and everybody laughing at you because your light bar is half as light as it should be. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, and then you get another problem because if you do the same, the same half-hearted splice job right here, well, you still run all on triple, and your corrosion, your corrosion, at, you get corrosion right there. Now, how much is here? Less, less than six, three, well, I don't know, we'll call it four. And how much is here? Four. So now you have one that's kind of bright, one that's not bright, and an accessory light bar that's just the weakest one you've ever seen in your life. All right? So we can answer all of those questions just by sitting in this room. There's no car in front of us. We didn't have to, we didn't have to plug in. We didn't have to do anything. Just knowing what you know about voltage drop will help you fix a lot of electrical problems. It's not that scary once you get some of these concepts. Any questions on voltage drop? Yeah. Okay. So if you splice it wrong, is there a chance that you can like, just absolutely cut off the other, the original setting? Like say you had a light bar yeah. and you tied the wire up more? Up here? Yep. And sure. And then they have corrosion and stuff and just knock out the original light. But is that possible? Well, if I tied it, you've been tied in like that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, corrosion alone wouldn't knock out the lights without knocking out that light if it was corroded at the splice. Okay. But if you somehow opened up that circuit so that it wasn't connected anymore. Like you cut a wire and then to add these, or sometimes you'll, these, I see they're, they're really popular, the aftermarket HID funky blinky lights or whatever that you're replacing your original headlights with. I mean, if you do something like that and you just completely take this out of the equation, well, then this should, should, in theory, work right, but those have different current draw to them. They have different, which is going to affect your fuse, your circuit protection. And more often than not, these lights aren't just on their own one circuit. I'm showing them as one circuit at a time here, but they're affecting other, other things in the system. So you can't say yes or no without looking at the whole big picture, okay. which is why the wiring diagram as a whole big picture is what I want to see.
The first thing that any, that it, when it comes to any electrical diagnosis for anything, if there's ever an electric, some sort of a problem, and I mean short of just a light bulb's out or something that's obvious like that, if anything is acting weird, like it shouldn't be, it's doing something that it shouldn't be doing, uh, the first step in every repair process is to remove all accessories. And what, what I mean by remove all the accessories is take this out, solder that back together properly, and completely remove that from the system. If that's a stereo, if that's a, 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 a low jack, if it's an anti-theft system, if it's a, a, con, a DC AC converter for a refrigerator, whatever it is, take it out of the system completely because unless you ha can look at the whole picture, the wiring diagram as it's supposed to be, you're not going to know where that voltage might be going or where those electrons might be going. Cool? Uniforms and safety glasses. Thank you.